everyone. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining me tonight for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. All right, you guys, we are back on the ABC alphabet. We are working on the uh, elephant, letter E. Uh, we've done A through D so, uh, uh, so far, so I'll show you guys those. And yeah, we'll start stitching another embroidery today. All right, let's get going. All right, so thank you all for coming in again. So here is uh, the E. We, we're going through the whole alphabet here. So, uh, so this week is the E, and next week we will be doing a letter F here. So, all right, uh, I have my fabric ready. I just need like one of these. Um, I have the pattern, but I did want to show you guys where we're at so far. So we did the letter D. So we are doing the quilt as you go process, which means we are actually, uh, when we finish each one of these, we are sewing it to the batting and to the backing fabric right away. Uh, and then we'll be trimming it down and assembling them next to each other. So it's actually going to be, we're going to end up with like eight and a half inch squares here. So we're going to be uh, chopping quite a bit down, but they will all be connected. So there's the letter C and that one's done as well. We got letter B. This one we actually colored in with crayon. So I just love how that's looking and uh, did little flowers around him. And then letter A, <laughs> little kind of like, I don't know, wetland sort of deal. I don't know. I am gonna. I am trying to work on my my quilting skills through this. My free motion quilting skills. I actually really like how this one turned out with the little the little words in here, and we did that little heart. I think a whole thing of just little hearts would be fun to do. Maybe we do that for the the elephant. We'll see. So uh, how we're gonna start out tonight is I am going to uh, do our little iron on. Okay, so I have my mat here. Ooh, I don't have a paper towel. Ooh, I don't think I have any paper towels, so I guess, um, let's see. I might actually put down another piece of the pattern down. So what I don't want is my iron-on pattern to go to the back of the fabric here. So, or to, to my ironing board. So I want to protect that with with something and since I don't have <laughs> since I don't have my a, a paper towel here uh, I think I'll just put like the trace me pattern underneath uh, but here we go so here is the elephant pattern this is what I'll be looking at tonight uh, for my colors and for um, just to know what stitches go where it comes with a traceable pattern that's the trace me pattern and the iron me pattern that's what we'll be using tonight and then just a little how-to on the stitches uh, a little bit more info on the back so that is that i do have <laughs> my my little strawberry tray of floss so this is this is uh we started off with like 23 skeins of floss different colors and I'm attempting to see how far I can get with just those. So this is the mess that has happened so far from, from the other, other designs. So I got that going here. So, all right, first things first to do the iron on pattern is we want to cut off this extra text. Don't need any of that transferring to the design. Okay. So I'm going to preheat my fabric here, but I think I am going to actually, I'm going to use this trace me pattern. And I'm just going to place that underneath uh, just to protect my surface because uh, there's, you know, little holes in the fabric from the weave, just the, just like the, the threads woven together, those little holes, the ink can go through there and I don't want it transferring to my my mat surface here so i'm just putting that little piece of paper uh, usually i will put a um a paper towel i'm gonna actually kind of center that right away just because that'll be a good guide for me just place the fabric right on top a little fuzzle in there okay 
So we're going to place that right there. I want it to be in the middle. We do have enough space around the edge on all these. So uh, um, if I do not center it perfectly, we'll be able to cut it center later. Okay. So I need to preheat the fabric. This is super duper important when you're transferring your embroidery pattern with an iron on. You're going to want to preheat your fabric. Um, you know, I have mine on the cotton setting because it's cotton fabric. So I'm just basically warming up the fabric. Then I'm going to place the design on top, center it like so, uh, face down, and then I'm just going to set the design on there for a couple seconds, like five seconds or so. Move over a little bit. Let's just peek. Ooh, I think I need a little bit more there, so I'm gonna just go a little longer. Peek again. Oh, that's plenty good. Let's keep going. I think we are good to go. Yep. So there we are. <laughs> So I, I should be able to use this several more times. Uh, and actually, why don't we, I've been kind of doing two of each of these, just because I have in my head that maybe I'll make an alphabet book out of them. So I do have a bunch of pre-cut fabric. So I think I'm going to transfer another one right away. You can use them up to like five times. You might have to hold them a little bit longer each time. But now I've kind of warmed up that paper. So I think, I think it might actually go on a bit better tonight but this will be fun to stitch uh, so I'm hoping that we'll get to do the quilting on it this week as well it's been kind of nice to just zoom me through all that free motion quilting and then maybe we can actually if this goes fast enough we could assemble some of those blocks together too so it starts looking like a real quilt so about five seconds or so does it and we're plenty good here just holding it there. Good, good, good. So that is all ready to go. So there's our, our two designs. And like I said, we could, we could transfer this a bunch more times if we wanted. Um, so this one I'm going to set aside. Uh, like I said, I have a whole, whole second set that I got going on here, uh, just in case I do want to stitch them again. And we talked about making, yeah, like a cute little fabric book out of them. What we're making out of these is going to be a quilt. So this is my layout of the quilt right now. And each one of these segments is, you know, going to be one of our squares here. So that's the deal. So I'm going to set uh, this one aside as well. And we'll stitch with this guy. Alrighty. And my embroidery hoop went somewhere. Oh, I think I brought it back downstairs. <laughs> so I'm going to use a, a different embroidery hoop than I normally use. Uh, this one has a wrapping around it, which is kind of fun. I'll kind of show you the, the difference. So here's our, this is our embroidery of the month for, for this month. And I have this uh, little bamboo hoop on it. Uh, I, I could just take this out too, but anyway, this is our embroidery of the month. So this is my, these are the hoops that come with the kits. Uh, this is a little older hoop that I had. It's it's just um, it's wood instead of bamboo, which doesn't mean much. But what's fun about this one is I have covered the inner hoop with some thread or some some fabric. So I just cut like one inch strips of fabric. I think this is linen that I just had scrap, and I wrapped it around and around and around, kind of at like almost a forty five degree angle. Uh, and uh, when I got to the end, let me see if I can find it. When I got to the end, I just stitched it down with a few stitches. There we go. <laughs> stitched it down, a few stitches. Uh, so this is totally uh, held in place, these, th this fabric. And what this does is it will help uh, reduce um, the line that the hoop makes on the, the fabric. Like if you leave it on there for a long time, it can kind of crease the fabric. Uh, this will help with that. And it'll also help since it's a little squishy cause it's fabric, it will help hold the fabric in place. So this should, this should stay in place really, really well. Like if you find it that your fabric slipping in your hoop a little bit, or it's not as, as taut as you want, you might consider, uh, wrapping, wrapping the hoop with some extra, extra uh, fabric that you 
just have laying around. Some people I know do the outer hoop as well, but I find that you can't always close it then because sometimes the, the screw closure just is so wide because you've put all that fabric on that it can't, can't get to the, um, to the screw part of it. All right, I'm just kind of stretching in here a little bit. I don't want to distort it really. I want to just kind of make sure it all looks straight still, but I'm just trying to get rid of like all the like little bloops that I can feel in the fabric, just the like little loose parts. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. So, all right, let's scooch him out of the way. Okay, so here's the design. Um, I'm gonna use this just as my guide for colors. Uh, I might not actually, I actually designed these patterns uh, like a decade before I uh, made the, our threads. So this is our penguin and fish embroidery floss. Um, and these are <laughs> some old patterns, the ABC patterns uh, are, are about like 10 years old. And uh, uh, we've never done it as a series before. We've never stitched them all at once. So I thought that that would be fun to do this year. <laughs> so that we're going to our vintage penguin and fish basically uh, and stitching. So we basically got back stitched for all our outlines and then satin stitch for some of the filled in shapes. So we got uh, the letters, we have the little tail, the little flowers, got a few different colors in, and then a running stitch, which is like a dashed line that's around the ear there. So I'm gonna keep this near me as I work and I'll be looking at that as a guide. Okay. So let's get started. I'm really kind of actually tempted to make this a pink elephant, but we'll 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 stick to the blue. <laughs> so this is kind of that denim wash color for the outline, and I it looks like I've used that a few times before. So I'm just gonna kind of grab this. I should maybe I'll wind these all up nicely um, as I use them. I should just do that. I have a few extra of those little bobbins. I should get a few of those out and then I won't have like this crazy mess anymore. I'll just have a, a few cute little bobbins. And it looks like I have a piece already pulled. Excellent. So I'm gonna actually just start with this piece. And why don't we use the thread conditioner today? I was just talking to uh, my brother on the phone, it is his birthday today, and he's uh, the one that makes these thread conditioners. They're gonna be working on that this this year, and uh, we are gonna chat again soon about getting some of these for us. But anyway, these are just testers for now. This is that like yummy cookie smelling one. So you don't need, you don't need the thread conditioners. They just smell good. <laughs> they kind of hold this, hold the threads together a little bit more. I'm just going to run my finger through. So any excess um, is off. I just have them on my brain and uh, um, on my mind. And I'm like, oh, I'll use the thread conditioners tonight. And it smells good. Makes the whole room smell nice. Oh, Deaver said that uh, conditioner is so cool. Yeah, it it just smells amazing too. Like they're so potent. Like I could really just have this open on my work surface and just smell it for the evening. Maybe I will. I'm just gonna have this. I'm gonna have this sit right here. And it's gonna make this area smell good. Actually, let's see if I have a different one. I might like this one better. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the one that smells like Christmas, which I don't need it to smell like Christmas, but I do like that evergreen smell. Uh, it's like an evergreen um, foresty smell. I'm gonna let that one out tonight so I can smell that one. So we're gonna have like, this one's kind of cookie flavored a little bit and uh, evergreens. Um, we're gonna have a little holiday festive feel. All right, I'm gonna start with an away knot here. Uh, I'm just gonna do the outline first. I always kind of like doing the outline first. It just feels like, um, feels just like I get a lot done when I start with the outline. What else uh, could you use until the thread conditioner is available? You don't actually need anything. Um, yeah, you totally don't need anything. Uh, you, you, could, you could use like, yeah. 
it's kind of like a beeswax, so you could use a beeswax uh, if you wanted to. This is like a this is like a cosmetic grade beeswax, I think. Um, but you really don't need anything. It just smells really good. Uh, which blue am I using? I'm using the denim wash blue. Oh, uh, Megan saying still love the nails. Yes, so the nails are freaking holding up. I am loving it so far. All right, I'm going to put my needle in here, and I'm actually going to start right there. So I'm basically reserving some thread. I probably only need that much. Reserving some thread for later. Oh, and we're going to get you guys zoomed down in here today, too. So, all right, here we go. Let's uh, start a back stitch here. So I'm going to start with this line. I'm starting like a stitch length away from it, uh, which, you know, I'm doing about an eighth of an inch. And you can kind of see on the back, I have this little thread on reserve now. So that I'm going to use uh, to weave in the ends later so I don't start with a knot. I know it looks like I'm wasting a lot of thread, but it does make the, the back really nice and clean, and I like it. So I started about an eighth of an inch away, and I'm going to go backwards towards the beginning of my line, and I'm going to go right in the beginning. So this will be for the back stitch. All right, and that's my first stitch right there. So I'm going to come forward now, come up about a stitch length away from uh, um, that starting point there, and then I'm going to go back into that exact same hole from that last stitch. And there we have our two uh, first back stitches. And I'm going to just keep going all the way along the line. Do nothing special with this one so far, just little back stitches. Uh, maybe the, oh, we talked about for the fox. So the fox is next week. We're going to do some like chain stitches or so we're going to fill in the, the F with uh, French knots and stuff, I think we we're gonna we we're gonna do. But the nails are totally holding up, um, so I'm hoping they go through the week. I don't know why they wouldn't at this point, which is crazy. It's crazy for me to do two um, two weeks worth of having my nails like so last week is when we did them so last week on monday like right now right now is when we did them last week so they've gone a full week today and they're still looking pretty dang swell if you compare it to how uh my nails usually look i mean look they're even like shiny and nice still there's no chips there's no freaking anything it's crazy town so huge improvement on uh, um, just the lacquer nails. I would have had to do those three times um, since I did them on, on Monday. Uh, so I think really the big deal with these nails are going to be just like the grow out. Um, so I, I can tell that they have grown out a little bit, but they're not so obnoxious yet. Uh, so that's, that's going to be the thing. And that's why I'll probably do them at the end of the week. Probably going to do it on over the weekend. So maybe I'll come in live and do them live again. <laughs> uh, but if not, I think the weekend, then I don't have the pressure of, like, having to do it right before prepping for, for this or something. But anyway, they're turning out fabulous. Like, if I had to go three weeks at this point, I bet you I probably could. They would just be really grown out, and I don't know if I – they I don't know. We'll have to see what they look like after after this week. But I am confident this week uh, sticking with them, and that's a huge, huge improvement. And I really, really put them through, um, put them through the works uh, since I got them, since I put them on. I've been trying to like actively on purpose do things that I know would totally ruin my other nails. Like today, I, I was cooking all day today and chopping vegetables and you know, in and out of water and, uh, you know, scraping things. And, you know, I put together boxes the other day and boxes really used to uh, take all the nail polish off my nails just because I'm like rubbing with my tips to like um, put, put the boxes to assemble the boxes. 
and that would just scrape my nail away basically and I did laundry that always takes my nails just off like the lacquer so I did all the things that usually uh, are horrible for my nails and they work they look perfectly fine still I mean if you look really really close there's some you know minute scratches and stuff like that but like pff, freaking nothing so anyway very happy with them so far <laughs> Oh, and you guys, so I'll have to plan for this, but so I got the, the nail polish is from Nail Boo, and if you haven't been along on this whole, like, silly journey, um, uh, it's powder, like, dip powder nails, so it's, like, a, acrylic, but as a powder, so you put, like, a, some little base coat on and then dip it in powder, and it's a pile of steps, it took me two hours to do it for the first time last week. Um, but anyway, so I ordered them from Nail Boo, and they accidentally, and I, I confirmed it with them, and they said just keep it, but they accidentally sent me a whole, my order, all over again. So I have a whole extra set of the colors and, and everything that I got, like a beginner set, basically. A starter set, so I may do a giveaway for those, um, coming up. <laughs> So if any of you guys were interested in that nail polish situation that I did last week, Monday, um, I think I'm going to be giving away like everything that I um, did my nails with because I, I got a bonus kit in the mail, which is awesome. <laughs> Robin says me. Yeah, so I don't I don't quite know how I'm going to do do that yet. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll, uh, maybe on Saturday and su or Sunday, one of those days, I'll, I'll, um, I'll probably have to take the nails off for one day, day and put them back on the next day. I don't know, but maybe I'll do my nails again live over the weekend, and uh, <clears throat> maybe we can do some sort of giveaway then somehow. Uh, but that'd be fun. But yeah, like I got it in the mail again. I'm like, what? I better not get charged twice for this. And uh, so anyway, I, I contacted them and, you know, checked with them and they're like, oh yeah, you, you ordered it on the day that we messed up a pile of orders. So we accidentally sent out doubles to, to some people. I'm like, oh, okay. And they, they're like, feel free to keep it. So I'm like, well, that's, nice for me. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I'm not going to need all that stuff again for a long time. And, and, the, you know, I would get different colors too, probably. So I thought we could do a little giveaway of the box full of stuffs. So yeah, anyway, so that will be on the agenda at some point, at some point soon. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I know, nice for me and marketing for them, I know. So, whatever. I'd rather give it away than, you know, have it here. I don't I don't need it. I got, got a set already. But yeah, so if anyone was interested in trying out that whole powder thing, um, uh, we'll do some sort of giveaway for it. Some sort of simple, simple, simple giveaway sort of thing. Maybe I'll put a pile of penguin and fish stuff in there too for funsies. All right, we're getting a good go on this outline. So this is a uh, one piece of thread. Or I, I'm using three three um, three uh, threads. I separated into three, but this was already separated. Um, when I meant one thread, I mean this was going through a length of thread once, and you know, based on this, I'll probably have to do it at least two more times, maybe three more lengths. So I'm just I'm just picturing in my head how much floss I'm gonna need. But I am using three threads, so I've separated the um, six strands that come in a skein into three. And we'll do that again in a second because I'm almost out of this thread. But 
But I always think it feels like I got a lot done when, when, uh, when I get an outline done. But I think this is going to be a quick one this week. So I think we'll do the satin stitch for the ease again. So we can go through that. And um, so that, that'll take like a while. That'll take like a day. I'm trying to figure out how many days this might take. I'm sure we can finish the outline potentially tonight or get real close. And then it's just a pile of details. I mean, dang, we might be done by Wednesday. That'd be cool. So then we can free motion quilt it. And then I think we can potentially start sewing what we have done together already so we can start going I can show you that actual uh, free motion quilting not the free motion quilting the quilt as you go process where we actually take finished quilted blocks like mini quilts basically and hook them together uh, into a larger quilt basically is is the plan uh, but it, it'd be awesome to get on top of that process um, real quick at the beginning here because the neat thing about that is once everything's sewn together, then we're done, basically. We don't have to quilt or, s like, sandwich and quilt a giant quilt that can barely fit in my sewing machine. Um, we'll just be done with it because we've quilted it all when they were smaller. So I just kind of love that. Ooh, chocolate chip cookies? Were those... Was that a like some production mistake and that's how those were made because that's cool oh, i went grocery shopping today and the grocery store we go to has the best freaking chocolate chip cookies they're my favorite uh but they didn't have any i went too late in the day people snuck them all out again are you gonna fill the inside haru i'm not gonna fill the inside of this although we you could. Uh, something this big would take a really long time to fill. Um, so no, this is just going to be the outline. Um, oh, but I am going to fill, I am going to fill the letter E's. So that's kind of, will give you a sense of what you could do with the whole thing, but I am just going to fill in the, the two letters. Oh, I didn't really talk about weaving in the ends here, uh, but we'll do it again here. So remember that piece that we reserved at the beginning, that was our away knot. Uh, I am going to cut that knot away now. And that is going to give us an extra little piece of thread here at the beginning where we started stitching. And I'm now going to weave in those and that end as well. And uh, that's going to get it so we don't have any knots in the back. So there's not going to be any knots for our threads to catch on. Uh, that's just going to help our back be nice and clean too. So if you were going to stitch this on like a tea towel, that would be something you'd want to think about for sure. Just having a nice clean back. Oh, Amy says I'm stitching the gladiolus and just finished the zinnias. Awesome. I feel like a single, oh, a single chain stitch pro. Nice. Yeah. I, I love, uh, those single chain stitches. Yeah. The, um, the zinnias are like all single chain stitches, <laughs> but I think it just looks so fluffy and, and pretty when it's done. So speaking on that, you know, this month, the embroidery of the month is the sunflower. I'll show you guys that again. All right. So I wove it back and forth three times and now I'm going to just snip the thread off. Uh, it's kind of like making a long, a long knot, but look, it's nice and smooth. There's no knots anywhere. I just love stitching, stitching this way. But uh, so here's the sunflower design. We'll be stitching this uh, week three of the month. But all of these petals are a stem stitch. And we don't do that very often in our, our lives. So this, all of them are stem stitches. So you will be a pro at uh, stem stitches. Or at least a, a, seasoned, uh, a seasoned beginner, at least. Seasoned intermediate uh, <laughs> person at uh, the stem stitch. Once we're done, I say that because stem stitch, I've seen some pro work at the stem stitch and uh, I've seen people be able to control the thickness and thinness of their lines just by the angle and the length of their stem stitch. So there are some like awesome, awesome stem stitch uh, people out there. I'll have to find some examples. Um, so this is just like 
nice and simple, not getting that in depth, but we do uh, do a special little trick to turn at the corners. Uh, in my stem stitch video on the blog, I do talk about that uh, with the raccoon sampler. And uh, um, we will go through over that for sure once we stitch this live in a couple weeks. Oh, this is uh, Patty. This is our embroidery of the month. You can find it at penguinandfish.com. It's in my profile. My, um, I think if you click the dealio up there, uh, I think you can get to my profile there. But there'll be a link um, to the site, and it'll be right in there or just on the homepage. But, yep, it's our embroidery of the month, and it comes as a whole kit. Uh, that has everything in, and but it also comes as, like, a PDF, too. Um, if that's more, like, if you're outside the U.S., I know a lot of people like the, the PDF for that. Um, or if you're interested in, like, stitching it on something else, like a tea towel or something, then the PDF is handy. Ooh, I've made a mess of this skein. Sheesh. Okay, so I'm going to get my next uh, piece of thread out. So I'm getting about 24 inches. 18 to 24 inches is usually my go-to cut. Zoop, snip that. And we are going to separate this into uh, three strands. So it starts as six. Six right here. And I am going to just kind of bop the top of it just to isolate one of them so I'm gonna just pull the one and have it in between my fingers and we're just gonna pull it right out and I'm gonna do that two more times one sometimes I like to just run my hand through it make it smooth again but I'm just holding it in between my fingers and it's gonna gather all crazy on the end until the thread is out and then it just just sort of relaxes I actually kind of find this the, the fastest way to um, get the number of threads you need. I know it seems like extra work than just pulling pulling it in half, but I don't know. This I've not had any problem with tangling or anything from doing this, and I think it's just nice and fast. Ooh, let's go through the thread conditioner again for funsies. So this is that um, thread conditioner that I'm kind of sampling. My brother is going to go in production on them soon, and we'll get some, I'm thinking make our scented embroideries and I just have it out because it smells really good it's making making the living or making my uh, little dining room area here smell all evergreeny which is nice all right just running my hand through it you don't need it I just think it smells amazing so as you're stitching it just smells good which is cool oh Amy says I love the sunflower I need to remember to order yeah I am loving uh, loving how this one turned out. So this is an intense one as far as stitching too. Like uh, the the uh, stem stitches that will take us some time. And then <laughs> Amy, it's just like the zinnias. We got a whole pile of single chain stitches in the middle. But I think it looks just so fun. I love how it turned out. And then the little sunflower text I think is, is cute too. But I really had a fun time with all the stem stitches. And like I said, we don't do that totally often in, in our patterns. Uh, so it'll be, a, it'll be a little different thing for us um, when we stitch it live. Something we don't do very often. I don't know why. I, you know, I'm just stuck on this. I like the back stitch for outlining. It's just so precise. Like, you can get over any corner and angle, and it's just going to look perfect every time with the back stitch. Whereas with, like, stem stitch and chain stitch... It's hard to get harder to get curves perfect and angles perfect, so I don't know. I usually stick with the back stitch for things, but every once in a while, it was it's fun to do the stem stitch. All right, I'm gonna weave into the backs of these stitches, and then I'm gonna continue. Oh, I'll probably stop right here, grab the tail, and then I'm gonna just continue around until I run out of thread again. I think. So just again, same thing. I'm gonna weave back and forth. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start away and go towards where my starting point. That's gonna be my first bit and you can leave a little tail uh, or you can try and get it right up to the end um, then I'm going to weave back I'm going to try and get as many different spots as I can compared to the first one we're basically making like a long knot by by weaving it in but it's just cleaner and uh, and the third time is is what really holds it together here there we go. So now we're nice and solid and we still don't have any knots on the back to catch on any of our, any loops we might make. 
All right, I'm gonna continue the backstitch. I am gonna kind of go at an angle here though, just cause I like having my, my left hand um, kind of where my stitching is happening so I can feel the stitches go through the fabric. Oh, Justin says, feels so good to be stitching this again. I know it's been like a few weeks. We had an extra week in, uh, um, we had an extra week in March, like how the months lined up. Uh, so we had an extra free week. So yeah, it feels like we haven't done this in a while. Oh, and, and uh, I so wanted to do, it didn't happen. I so wanted to do go live this weekend to do more of that punch needle that the, um, the tulip. Uh, it's right next to me here. I'll have to show you guys that again, but ugh. So maybe I'll have to do my nails again this weekend and then get that out and, and stitch some more of it. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to let that wait till we have another free week. I had so much fun stitching that here. I'll show you guys it now. It's sitting right here yet. So here's what we worked on. <laughs> <laughs> last week it's so big so we did this punch needle and I am just freaking loving it so far we got we got uh, up to the leaf here and let me flip it around so you can see what the heck we're doing so it, it's gonna be uh, some tulips so we got we got all these stems and these other leaves to go to go yet uh, but we got pretty far we got all the tulips done the the uh, buds Ugh, but I love it so freaking much. I can't wait to work on it again. So that's sitting here just reminding me of, hey, come work on me. Uh, but <laughs> it is embroidery week for the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's why I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll work on that this weekend again. That would be so much fun. I'm kind of wanting to do, <laughs> I'm still on, on nails in my head, but I, I have that like little lavender purple color. I'm kind of thinking that that might be the next color I test out. Ooh, Amy says we should do turkey work for the end of the tail. That could be interesting. Uh, I haven't done that in a while. I'll have to like remember how to do that again, but that would give it a nice little fluffy tail. That'd be pretty fun. Go over how to do turkey work again. We won't do that tonight for sure, because I'll be just doing this outline, but uh, I like that idea, Amy. And I'm doing that stabbing method of embroidery again, where I stab uh, from the underneath and I come all the way up and then I stab straight down from the top and go all the way back down versus the sewing method which is where you go in and out in the same motion, which, you know, I could be doing that. I have to rotate because I can only really go uh, right to left. <laughs> so I'm going to go in and then I'm going to come up in the same motion. So down and out in the same motion. So I got to go down in the, in the starting point and then come up where the stitch is supposed to end in the same motion. So I got to think about both those things and then I can pull through all all at once and then the stitch is done. So it really is fast, <laughs> but it's just not my go-to. I kind of just like chilling and doing my stabbing method, but I don't know. I should practice the sewing method a little bit more again too. I like the stabbing method because I can get straight down and straight up and I feel like I'm a little bit more accurate than the sewing method, but whatever. I should practice both, I'm sure. So you might see me like dragging um, the needle on the back here every once in a while. Uh, I'm just, I like uh, seeing that and then I can go right to where the line is. After a while you get better at just like having the needle, needle come up just at the right spot. But usually, you know, I'm stabbing a few points and then dragging it to the right spot. Ooh. Ooh, can't get that one. There we go. But yeah, that's kind of how I see where my next stitch is going to go. Just a little drag on the back. See the little point. Thanks, Haley. Okay. 
Yeah, and then the sunflower, uh, we will stitch live. So this is this project's, or this week's project is this elephant, and we will probably go all the way to quilt it. We'll do all the quilting for it. Um, so we'll have, like, make this little kind of mini quilt that we'll, we'll be attaching all those into a bigger quilt later. Uh, but so we'll probably do some free motion quilting, which will be fun. Um, and then the next week we'll be working on the fox. So ENF is this month's uh, game. ENF, and then uh, the week after that, so the third week, we'll be stitching that sunflower design. So I always, we always stitch this week three because then it gives it plenty of time to get to your guys' houses and everything. Uh, because we don't we don't release that pattern till the first of the month. So we it released on Friday, and I got most of them sent right away on Friday. So uh, they're shipping shipping fast. So you guys really what is it? Oh, it's just Monday today. But starting tomorrow, a few of you might have have your uh, embroidery already. Okay, I really like the idea of turkey work for the tail. I don't think I have that example of turkey work here i did turkey work on the like little poof on the hat of that dinosaur pattern the, the, the <laughs> that was a weird sentence the poof on the hat of the dinosaur pattern like <laughs> haven't said that sentence before uh, but anyway i i did a we did a we made clothing this is going to be a stupid sentence too but we made clothing for the tyrannosaurus rex <laughs> so we have a tyrannosaurus pattern embroidery pattern and uh, uh we made clothing for for it um, so it was a bonus pattern that had a it, like you know like a paper doll where you have all sorts of different clothing that you can put on the paper doll but in this case you get to put you get to choose what to put on the the tyrannosaurus and we dressed one up in uh, a little while back in ice skates and uh, a little poof uh, poofy jacket winter jacket coat and uh, a stocking cap with like you know like a knit stock stocking cap but for the stocking cap the the like ball the like pom-pom on the top we put um, we did with turkey work. So turkey work is where you make it really kind of like this poofy. It actually looks a whole lot like our our rug punching, the the needle punching that we did. Uh, it makes kind of loops. Yeah, that's basically it's. It looks similar. So it's making a pile of loops and then trimming them so it, it looks like fuzzy. And that would be kind of fun to do for this tail. I, I think we might have to do that. That'd be that'd be neat. Uh, Amy's asking, did it take more more than one skein of yellow for the sunflower? It took, this was my masterful thread chicken shenanigans, it took exactly one skein of floss. Uh, the kit has two skeins of floss because I think I got lucky by getting it just in the one skein. So it does come with an extra skein, um, two yellows in it, but I think I had about this much left of yellow in the whole skein. Um... <laughs> <laughs> to do to do that so I, I just had enough uh, but there is two skeins in the kit uh, so that's good uh, Kings learn I'm sure I'm not saying that right but uh, it it is like this poofy little stitch and it's so cute so yeah so maybe we'll do that tomorrow we'll we'll do um, we'll do the turkey work on his little tail it does take some time but it is really fun so you really got to want to do it. Like I would never want to fill like this whole guy with turkey work, but I have seen people do fill in large spaces with turkey work and it freaking looks amazing. But we'll just do his tiny little tail and that, just doing that will take some time. Oh, you do uh, uh, Stitch by Haley, you do, ooh, machine embroidery. Oh, but what you're doing, it takes a lot of talent. Uh, it, it takes time more than talent, I think. Oh, Kingsley R. Oh, RN. Okay, RN. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Thanks. It's so funny. Like, I see usernames, and it, once I figure it out, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. That makes sense. Um, 
But yeah, I I usually say if you can color, then you can embroider. Uh, we are just going over outlines. Just going over lines, staying within the lines, basically, um, with some stitches. And I just find this, like, super duper relaxing and everything. I actually think it probably takes a whole lot more skill to do machine embroidery. There's a lot of setup and a lot of nuance uh, in that that field, for sure. I just realized that I didn't pay any attention to the, the, to the ears. Theoretically, this would have been a good spot to, like, jump and do the ear. Um, and here, too, would have been kind of good to do the ear. But we're going to be almost out of thread soon, so we'll just... We'll just pop in and do the ears after, I guess. And we do have a second piece of thread somewhere around here, although I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is, good. I was like, oh no, that's not it. It's probably attached to me somewhere. Ah, thread always runs away from me. Because we, we did get two skein, or, or two, we split a piece of thread, so we do have another thing of blue hiding around here somewhere. It's literally probably attached to my sweater somewhere. Well, we'll find out soon, because I'm almost out of thread again. I have to scrounge it up, otherwise I'll just have to cut another piece. Everything ends up on the floor attached to me. I'm like literally in like a four foot area here, like square, or like a two, like a three foot by five foot square here. And it's shocking how much I can lose by sitting here, not going anywhere. <laughs> just like my scissors is gone or needles gone. It's just like, where does it go? <laughs> so we'll have to. Somewhere is the rest of this blue. Oh, I see it. <laughs> That's right, I, 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 um, it did end up on the floor. It ended up actually not quite on the floor. It was attached to those tulips, that tulip, uh, um, punch needle. I forgot that I brought that up here. All right, I think that's gonna be my last stitch with this. Let's weave it in. So the back's still looking, looking really nice. I'm gonna weave that back and forth through the stitches grabbing a bunch and then we're gonna go back the other way grab a bunch more as many little threads this is not meant to be like all woven in the perfect spot each time I'm on purpose trying to grab little threads here and there there we go and that kind of locks it in place now I can snip that end we don't even have little bitty ends that can get pulled to the front which is annoying too all right, there's the back so far. Here is the front looking cute. All right, let's, oh, I don't think I tightened this all the way. Maybe that's why. It feels like it keeps coming out a little bit, which shouldn't happen so much because I do have that wrapped hoop. Um, just didn't feel tightened all the way. Probably just forgot to do that. All right, here is that second half of the floss, our other three skein, or three threads of the skein. And again, for funsies, let's turn it into a scented embroidery. Here's uh, my brother's uh, thread conditioner again. Yep. And sometimes it just gets a little too much in there, so I'm just going to run my hand through it. Linda says, or you could use a, the small punch needle with floss. So uh, that's... A good theory, except for the um, this fabric is not great for uh, needle punch. Um, it will it will kind of tear the fabric a little bit. So it, it's not this this fabric isn't great for needle punch, but it will look like needle punch if we do turkey work on the tail. Ooh, smells so good. All right, should we get that ear now? I think all those ears are blue, yeah, blue. Actually, you know what? I did denim wash for this this outline. It might be that other blue would have maybe worked as well, but I think I originally did it with this denim wash. It's hard to tell. Um, it was before I, I had our 
custom colors of floss that we've that we've produced. So uh, these old patterns, the alphabet, um, sometimes they don't even have the same colors that we're, that uh, I have available. So we're just kind of playing with it, using it as a guide, and and doing what we want basically with the pattern. All right, I kind of want to just get these ears going. Actually, I might start here. Let's start here, go around here, and see if we can get the rest of this whole area. And then if we, if we have some left, then we'll maybe start this ear. All right, so I'm going to weave in the end way up here because my starting point is going to be there. Zoop. All right. So about right there. One. Um, Justin said, did you cut the fabric you wrap the hoop in on the bias or will any strips do? Uh, so I did not cut it on the bias. However, if you happen to do it on the bias, that would be better. <laughs> I mean, that's the theoretical correct way to wrap the hoop would be to cut a bias strip. So yeah, when you're cutting on the diagonal of the fabric, so it's stretchy, but I just did this with I mean, I, you know, it's all frayed, too, because I use linen, uh, which, you know, probably wasn't the best idea um, when you could just use cotton or some other ribbon or something that doesn't fray. But uh, I just had some strips left over from a project. They look like they're about one, one inch to like one and a quarter inch strips, whatever I had. And I just sort of wrapped it at an angle uh, till I was all the way around. And I think I might have even uh, used like lots of strips like I don't think this was one long strip I think I just was wrapping it and then when I got done with the one I would just start I would hold it in place with my hands and then just start wrapping the next one around it I think I'm not even sure I did more than that um, and then it was stitched down um, at the top when I was done just to hold the last bit but I if I remember correctly that's that's what I did for that it, it, it's been a long time since I since I did it but it's definitely just strips that I had around but now I'm thinking, what did I do with that nice linen that I would have had strips for? Some project. Ooh, that's going to bother me now. What project did I do with linen that required strips? I don't know. <laughs> it's going to bother me now. Ah, well. All right, I'm going to try the, the sewing method for this. So I'm going to go in and out in the same motion. It's a little hard. You got to get the, that other thread out of the way so you can see. This is faster, I think. Oh, you guys, it's already 925. Well, I guess we, you know, it always takes a little bit of time to transfer our design and all that. But we got pretty far tonight. I'll definitely finish this ear. Oh, dang. Wanda says, I'm doing a quilt that calls for hand quilting and I'm half done. Holy cow. Yeah, I'd love to see that too. Hand quilting, that is, that is something else. That is dedication and it just always looks so beautiful too. <laughs> Gretchen says, I know my eyes are, are calling my pillow. <laughs> I have to eat supper yet. I didn't, um, John made dinner, but then I came on here. He made a, I got a, I got a big salad with a, a hard boiled egg on it waiting for me. Dang you guys though. I, uh, I uh, just, prepped vegetables like all freaking day today I was determined like uh, you know we want to start eating healthy and I'm like oh the only way that happens is if we prep everything and it's good to go so like I made vegetable snack trays and um got a bunch of stuff ready to like vegetables ready to roast and just everything cut up so it's all available uh for whatever the needs are there's no cleaning or you know prepping it of any at all because it's all prepped 
Um, I made some soup out of all the leftovers in the fridge. So that cleaned out the fridge and now we have soup. I'm just trying to like prep everything. So we're good to go for like a week and a half without having to think. Cause it's just when we we're, we're so tired, you know, from the day that when it comes to having to make something, you know, that's when it ends up like we order something or we just eat crap and, and I did the shopping this time, which meant I, no crap was bought. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm a little, I got a little bit more willpower in the shopping of the not buying the stuff. And as long as we don't have it around, then we don't eat it, <laughs> whatever it, it is. Uh, so I picked up the shop in today and uh, did a ton of prep work, but man, I was going to cook chicken and uh, make some curry and some rice but i didn't get any of that done so there's still more prep to do but pretty happy with how far <laughs> far we got but dang that takes forever but we eat so healthy when we do um when we do have it just perfect oh Teresa says planning planning a menu and preparing really helps yeah uh, we have a pretty standard um, breakfast. We just have like big salads um, with a couple of fried eggs on top is usually what we have for breakfast. Uh, so the big salad is basically whatever greens we have and then whatever stuff we have cut up. So like we got some mushrooms and radishes and I think we have some bean sprouts and I... You know, I even peeled the oranges already, right? I peeled all of the oranges I got and put them in a container too because that's just like literally that step of having to peel the orange would make me not have the orange. So <laughs> we get we get so willpowered out when the food comes along. So I have to do it all at once and perfect. Oh, a real treat is saffron rice. Ooh, oh, saffron is expensive and hard to find. Yeah, we've been putting... Um, I've been doing rice and just putting like cumin and coriander seeds in it and that and like some turmeric and that's yummy. So I'll probably just make a batch of rice. Um, we've been using the instant pot, which is new to us. We haven't used it all that much yet, but we do have a couple frozen chickens, like whole chickens from um, John's parents. They raised uh, chickens this last year. So we're, we've been getting eggs from them, but they also raise like meat chickens. Um, and uh, there's like, you can apparently, and my mom, my mom tested this, so it worked for my mom, but you can put a whole chicken frozen into the instant pot and cook it that way. I'm sure it's not going to be like your golden brown whatever, but we're going to just use it for the meat and like turn that into like some curry and that sort of thing. So I, I don't want it like perfectly roasted. I want just the meat to fall off and then, then I can make a soup stock and stuff right after. Um, so anyway, that's on my list to do yet too. So a whole pile of instant pot stuff like rice and I want to do beans as well we got a lot of beans like i just love having that stuff available so like a whole thing of rice pre-cooked ready to go in the fridge beans pre-cooked ready to go in the fridge so we literally only have our salads that we're a la carte putting everything on so that's that's uh i still need to finish all that stuff up <laughs> anyway there's that's it takes forever whenever we do it, and it takes, like, a real, like, okay, I guess my day's doing nothing except for that all day, because it's going to take all day. But it really makes a difference in how healthy we eat during the week, and um, it takes so much stress off of the week, too, because basically all the cooking is taken care of, except for our little, like, morning routine egg making. Oh yeah, curry powder. We get, we got some curry paste stuff, but I'd like to work on curry some more. Like that's the thing. Like one of these weekends, it's just gonna be like, okay, here's the weekend that we try to make our own curry from scratch for reals, and uh, yeah, just like getting all the stuff or just all the different sauces and dressings and and all that are what I like 
don't do very well and I'd like to get better at all that. So I need like a whole event to sit down and learn that. Oh, Amy says you can make the stock right in the pot too. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping hoping to do. I, I made some soup stock today, but I didn't make it in the instant pot just because it was just too much of a mess everywhere. Um, and I'm still learning it. And I knew I was going to be cutting and doing stuff um, in the kitchen all day anyway, so I just did it on the stove top. I made stock and then I made it into soup right away. Most of it. We have stock left over that we froze. We have these really fun um, cube things. What are they called? I forget. But like they're these one cup cubes that like silicone cubes that you can freeze your stock in and then you can stack them and stuff. That, uh, we have some of those. So we, we did that. Oh, Tiber says it's so much to boil a bunch of eggs at one time in the Instant Pot. So I tried that and I keep not doing it right. So I keep end up with like half boiled eggs that I have to hard boil again. Like I, I do them just perfectly on, on the stove top and I haven't, I haven't figured out the eggs on the Instant Pot. I think the first time I did it, it worked out perfectly, but I think those were out on the counter, so they were already at room temperature. I did it again with ones that were came out of the fridge, and those ones I had to do like three different times before they were actually boiled. Ooh! Uh, uh, Megan says, my mom cooks chicken in the Instant Pot, then shreds it with the KitchenAid mixer and keeps it for different meals. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, from chicken and rice, tacos, etc. So that's cool. So I, we don't have a kitchen maid to blend it all up. Um, or shred it, but I do, I am hoping to just have it, not necessarily shredded, but like small little pieces. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to have that available in the fridge. And then, well, maybe I'll, I'll make some into a curry right away, but uh, like with, with the rice and everything, but the rest I just want available, right? I just want like Oh, maybe we want that on our salad in the morning, or maybe this would be good in a in a veggie wrap or something. Uh, so, oh, gee, Megan, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Megan says I'll find the uh, egg recipe I use and send it to you. That'd be great. Yeah, I'm totally still learning how to use it. I can make rice, and we made stock. I made stock in it once, and John's been doing most of the instant pot stuff. He's been doing most of the cooking lately, but I'm trying to get on it again so we can be in our health kick world um so i can get on it again too just all that prep stuff but i, I like just having all that stuff prepped like i made a bunch of veggie trays that have like a hard boiled egg and a couple different cut up veggies and some fruit and just so you can just grab that when you want something crunchy or sweet or something in the middle of the day and then you're like oh there's nothing oh these veggie trays are here fine i'll just have a freaking veggie tray but then it's like the best thing <laughs> so that's that's kind of how that goes so so we can't have any of the like chips or any of this like hor like bad stuff not bad but you know the stuff that we binge on we can't have any of that around uh and then we have to have like the alternative pre-prepped like the veggie trays all ready to go i think i'm just gonna end this thread right here and if we can manage that, then we're, that's like when we do the best <laughs> and when we feel the best during the day, all, all of that. All right. I think, um, I went a little longer than I thought I was going to today, but it was nice to use up this thread. So, Hey, we got basically the outline done. I mean, I don't have that second ear, but we got the exterior outline done tonight, uh, which is great. So I think we're going to just cruise on this this uh, elephant this week. So, God, I, I think we can probably honestly finish up the rest of this tonight or this uh, tomorrow. But maybe we'll try and start with that turkey work. So I think I am going to do the turkey work. Uh, so in the original, we did it as satin stitch, a little purple satin stitch, but maybe we'll try a little purple turkey work. And again, that it's like little floofs. It's almost, it almost looks like punch needle uh, when you're done because it is just like floof that stands up and we actually have to even trim it to have it be fluffy uh but i think that this is just the right amount of space to do that in where it doesn't it won't take forever it's going to be a really big poof uh but i think it'll be fun i like that idea so yeah so we'll do turkey work tomorrow first and then 
move on to the rest of this face. I don't think that'll take all that long. It might take a, you know, another day just because we start with the turkey work, but I still think Wednesday we'll probably be done with this whole thing. So we will see. All right, you guys. So that is that for the night. Again, I think we got a good start. Got the whole outline on there. Uh, always nice to get that far on the first day. Makes me makes me feel like we got a lot done by getting that outline done. Versus if I did like all the little details first or like the turkey work tail first, uh, it would have been, you know, we would have put in the hours, but uh, it just doesn't feel the same as getting the whole outline done. So I do like doing that. Uh, all right, you guys. So thank you very much again. Uh, just reading some comments. Oh, you make your own salad dressing. Oh yeah, that's funny that you know that. I don't always have salad dressing, you're right. John likes salad dressing, but I just always have mine plain. Um, although I do like, I don't know, I just don't like when you go somewhere and they just blop a bunch of salad dressing on your salad. Um, I hate that actually. Uh, I don't actually really actually like having salads at places because the lettuce is all wonky too, but anyway. <laughs> But I, I, that's one of my agendas, though. I'd love to take a weekend and be like, it is salad dressing weekend. We are going to learn how to make all of these delicious salad dressings, and we are just going to have all these little bottles of salad dressing. The end. We are going to master salad dressing this weekend. <laughs> so I want to do that with dressing and then, uh, like, other sauces and, and that sort of thing, too. Uh, so that, that's, that's in the plan at some point. <laughs> all right, everyone. I will call it there. So have a lovely, lovely rest of your Monday, and I'll see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Have a lovely night. Good night.